afternoon. In this module, I will be dealing with the poem Alfred Noyce's Highwayman. This is a ballad, so you will be introduced to a new genre of poetry, the ballad. After analyzing the features of a ballad and analyzing the poem and having a model reading of the poem, we would also be doing reading skills. The strategies of skimming and scanning will be briefly introduced to you so that you can explore your reading skills and use it well. So let's start with the features of a ballad. A ballad has very ancient origins. They are narratives which use folk songs, verse, using folk thread. They are orally handed down stories. The purpose is to entertain people and to record and document events which have happened in the community. It is basically a community experience where there is drama, there is song, there is dance, there is music. And the people through the chorus, which is really a refrain, a repetitive line or a stanza, which involves the people who are listening, the audience who are listening to the story. They join in through those repetitive lines, which enhances their enjoyment and entertainment uh, has more entertainment value and it also increases the intensity of emotion that they are experiencing when they, when they participate and they get involved in the story. Use of stock phrases and simple language is a part of the ballad because we are taking from an ancient world uh, their experiences and obviously as the community is involved, it cannot be too complex and complicated because a wide variety of uh, audience is there before you. People with uh, extreme scholastic ability and people who are very ordinary and uh, simple folk. So in order to meet the demands of every kind of audience, you have very stock phrases, simple language used, and as this is a word, song, dance and narrative, a lot of vivid detailing descriptions, uh, detailing descriptive uh, words are all used. Remember, this is like a cinema in front of you, but in word form it unfolds. So uh, it also has the supernatural element in it. And it is peppered with a lot of dialogues because, as I said, we are dealing with an ancient world and a different perspective altogether. So with all these features, the most important is also a third person narrative, which I haven't mentioned here because as the ballad evolved, it changed, it changed its style. These are the basic elements which exist. But in the earlier, whether it is a folk tale or a ballad, especially when it belonged to the oral tradition, it had a very, very uh, objective narration. The writer or uh, the narrator, not only would he or she be anonymous, but they would not enter the narrative through judgments or through value uh, orientations. They just narrate. The theme usually would have some universal significance and uh, the purpose is not only to record a particular uh, phase in a community's life but also to uh, share a world view without sounding very didactic or judgmental. So these are basically the features of a ballad. What is its origin? A ballad, as I said, is one of the oldest forms of literature. It is, it belongs to the oral tradition and the folk tradition. So obviously it has to be very ancient. People always found ways and means of entertaining themselves and ballad is one such form. 
It is derived from the Latin word belair, meaning dancing song. So lyrical uh, poems produced by, uh, uh, you know, bards and singing poets uh, would incorporate song and dance. It was a kind of a performing art in itself. Even the word ballet comes from bel air, the dance, dancing song. The French and Spanish poets, European poets in 13th century, wrote, started uh, writing uh, a lot of ballads. So, in short, a ballad comprises of all the parts of a performing art and it basically involves the entire community in the experience of the narrative. You have different kinds of ballads. Now you have the written ballad. Earlier it was the oral ballad. You have the folk ballads. Now you also have the romantic ballad, which are expressions of love and adventure. Uh, Keats's La Belle Dame Sans Mercy is one of the most famous uh, ballad written in the Romantic age, but it is a kind of horror also uh, com combined with uh, uh, romantic romp. So that's one example of a romantic ballad. What we are going to read, The Highwayman, also has very romantic ingredients in it. What is a tragedy? You need to know this to understand Highwayman. Any performance on the stage or any reading, if it leaves you with a sense of awe, fear, sometimes despair, helplessness, pity, even involving death can be a tragedy. My God, this is such a waste of life. How futile. If we get these ideas and these feelings, what you have seen is of tragic proportions. The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Coleridge is one of the classic examples of a ballad with tragic features. So you see a picture of a very romantic a scene here taken from a romantic ballad. So this is how a tragedy, a mask of a tragedy or a tragic hero would look like. Here is a wandering minstrel. <coughs> Ballads, when they started becoming very popular and they were enjoyed by people in England, you had these bards, these song writers and narrators who would write songs. You have, a, you have the pen in his hand and a sheet. You have a little boy singing and a person playing the lyre and he has a wind instrument in front of him. So all these are the ingredients of a ballad. And they, these people were known as wandering minstrels or wandering poets who would collect stories from different regions and from different places and then share it as a performance with the community uh, that they uh, wandered into. So they were basically moving from one place to another. This is what you are going to deal with in the next session, The Highway Man. Which, is, which has all the ingredients of romance and tragedy. Thank you.